So I was working on this model earlier and I ran into a really tricky situation which I think is a great tutorial idea because you'll probably run into something similar as well and you're going to need to know the thought process to know how to fix it. So if we take a look at this thing, it's basically a sphere and I wanted to create some sort of entryway here and fuse that entryway to the sphere. And you're going to see this isn't something you can easily do per se. If we go into edit mode, you're going to see I have really clean topology as well uh, for those of you that care. And it looks pretty much completely seamless if you take a look at it. So how exactly did I accomplish this? So if I go in here and I take a UV sphere, for example, subdivide it a few times, maybe to scale it up, you know, more or less the same size, and we go here, you know, you might think, okay, I'm just going to go into the front view here and I'm going to, you know, chop off the bottom. So let me quickly add in a plane. And what we'll do with the plane is we'll extrude it down and then use this as a boolean, and then we'll just apply that boolean. So you might be thinking, okay, basically what I can do here is I can, you know, extrude out some of these vertices here or whatever. And technically you could do this, but you're certainly not going to get the same result because of the curvature of these faces here. You know, I could extrude this out on the x-axis here. I could run a subdivision. And you're going to see we just simply don't get that same quality results that we have here. The approach I actually took was with a boolean operation and I'm going to show you how you can finesse this. Now keep in mind um, I was using quad remesher for part of this but you don't technically need it if you're not concerned with the topology. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the sphere and what I'm going to do is basically add in another UV sphere and I'm going to move it up and then I'm just going to get it roughly the same size as this one right here and I'll move this one over, okay? And then just like I did before, let's go ahead and remove the bottom. Just use this object as a Boolean cutter. And then we can go ahead and apply that Boolean. So essentially what I did here was I took a cube, I'm gonna go over here, and I scaled the cube down a bit, and I basically fused this cube to the mesh. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm going to move this out a bit, pretend this is going to be our entryway. So I'll try to make it roughly the same size and we'll just kind of move this up, right? And then what I'll do is apply the scale and then maybe just add in a nice chamfer here just to make the entryway look a little bit more interesting. And the reason I'm showing this to you guys is because if you're going for concept renders, there's going to be a lot of situations where you kind of want to finesse the result. It's just going to be easier that way. So essentially, I just had to think one step at a time. I had to think, okay, first thing I need to do is I need to get a general shape connected to the sphere. I'm not even going to worry about the bevel. Now, once I've created that, what I need to do is I need to fuse this piece to the object so that way I can add a bevel where these two are connected. So we're going to go ahead and add in a union boolean, and I'm going to apply it. And now we should be able to take these edges here and bevel them. But you're going to see, um, first thing I noticed was that this isn't actually flush. This edge here isn't flush with this one. So what I'm actually going to do before I apply that boolean is take this face. Let me undo this real quick. I'm going to take this face right here, go into vertex snap, and then press G, Z, and just snap it right there. So that way we're on the same plane. And then we can go ahead and use a union. And if it disappears, that's simply because we need to change the solver over to exact because it's on the same plane. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. And now what we need to do is figure out how exactly we get this bevel going. First thing you're going to notice is the topology here on the bottom. It's overlapping and a bit nasty. So what we're going to do is simply delete out these faces. Just we're going to reconnect everything. No worries. But for now, Let's just completely get rid of this, clean everything up, and what we could do is we could simply fill this manually with no issues, right? So if I try to run a bevel now, this is where things get tricky because what's happening is um, I try to run the bevel and it's just going to start overlapping with the geometry almost immediately and especially at this point down here, we just run into an absolute mess, right? 
So I could bevel it, I could try using offset cut, but even if I use offset cut, we still have um, a massive mess here on the bottom because offset cut is meant to be used in a cyclic formation, not kind of ended here. So this is where you kind of have to think about when you're working on these types of models, how can you finesse it just to get the result? Oftentimes, I'll do something completely, you know, incorrect, I guess you could say, in order to get the correct result. And this is the type of stuff tutorials don't necessarily teach. It's I'm trying to teach you the thought process here. How can I finesse this to get the result I want, right? So basically, what you can do is, in this case, what I did was I simply extruded this face down, right? That's all I did. I extruded this face down. And now what happened when I selected this area is it selected all the way down to this edge right here. So now when I bevel it, we're kind of getting somewhere. You see what I mean? Now that we have the bevel continuing as expected, right? The only issue we have are the overlaps. And now if we try to use the offset cut feature, boom, it's actually working much better than it did before. Now in this case, you're gonna see it starts overlapping and stuff. But the good part is I don't care because I'm using this portion that I just extruded as the finessing portion, I guess you could say. So all I'm worried about is how does it look above this extrusion? So if I go ahead and bevel this, you're gonna see the bevel is exactly what I needed. We can do that. And now check this out. All we need to do is come back in here with a plane and use this plane and just run another Boolean. So we'll scale this a bit, right? Invert the normals, make sure they're correct. And then what I can do is go in here, run my difference Boolean. We're gonna make sure again, this is set to exact. And look at that. We've basically used that extrusion to finesse the result we want here. And I do this all the time. I just don't really make tutorials on it. You're gonna see we do have a little bit of a problem right here. Um, most likely due to this vertex. Let's go ahead and apply the Boolean and take a look. Let's see what exactly is causing this. So you're going to see the topology is a bit of a mess. Like I said, if you're concerned with the topology, I'll show you how to quickly fix it. So what I could do here is, you know, I could just merge this down, maybe dissolve that one out. And we're going to have something that is a lot closer to what I wanted, right? And I could, you know, go to the bottom view here and line this up a bit more manually. You could even use the mirror tools add-on if you wanted to make this like perfectly smooth. I could go in here, right? And I could select these. I don't have mirror tools installed right now, but you could try using things like loop tools to kind of relax it a bit. Press Shift R a few times. And I basically spaced everything out evenly. See what I did there? And then I can symmetrize to the other side and get that. And now at this point, if you're someone who's just going for a concept render, you don't really need to worry about the topology here. But if you are going for clean topology, this is where the more advanced tools like quad remesher really come in handy. So what I could do is I could take a look at, you know, roughly how many triangles we have on this one. I don't need to go like crazy low or crazy high, but I could just use quad remesher here to completely remesh this object. And now if I go into edit mode, Look at that. And I could run a sub D modifier. It might have actually been a better idea to remesh it with a lower polygon count, so maybe 5,000. So that way I could use sub D. So now it's a bit lower resolution, but now I could actually use sub D to kind of get that nice bevel around those harder edges, right? And that is exactly how you can use Booleans and these different topology hacks in order to get cool results like this, which normally seem really tricky to do. I personally do this all the time. I know it's not the correct way to do things, but the simple fact of the matter is I don't care. I want to get the result I want, and if I can go the nasty route, I guess you could say, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's the best way to get these results. So now at this point, you can basically use your regular hard surface modeling workflow. So what I could do here is I could kind of tighten up all these edges by using a crease. We'll set the crease value here to one. So now we have perfectly hard edges. Let me turn the auto smooth back on. And now I could just go ahead, apply that sub D, 
drop a you know bevel modifier to get that nice highlight on the hard edges and I'm basically back to my hard surface modeling workflow in a fraction of the time. So whenever you guys are thinking about a tricky situation like this and you have absolutely no idea how to approach it, think about how you could finesse the situation, how you could basically brute force your way through and get basically the same exact result by just hacking the system. That's exactly what I've done here, and this is exactly what I do in a lot of my hard surface modeling workflows. I just don't usually show it in tutorials because I don't always run into them. So I hope this gave you some ideas, hope it gave you some different approaches and ways to think so that way when you run into a situation, you can use your you know, analytical skills to think about how to tackle that tough situation. Blender is you know, highly analytical and you have to think outside the box sometimes to get the results you want. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. And you can also check out some of our hard surface modeling courses and products over on blenderbros.com and also check out our free hard surface modeling jumpstart course. If you're brand new to this stuff, it'll get you up to speed very quickly. Thanks a bunch. See you in the next one.